hand and you don't say hello to anyone else. You say according to Lycan's, according to Lycan thing at 2003. You know what some of the roughnecks that you get? When I used to start my conversations with some of the roughnecks, so if I get a doorman in, I refer to Lycan thing. I, I, I do this anyway and it works because you're talking from the law and that you can't be challenged by that. See, so, and, and when I was working at uh, Stalbridge, uh, doorman right at the end of the night, and I said, I want you to uh, can you leave now, please, because I'm a doorman. I said, well, it doesn't matter if you're a doorman, you need to leave. He said, well, I'm a doorman, and I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I only said, like, finger once, and he said, you're good. That was his next set of words. You're good, ain't you? So, using the life and thing app is valuable. All right, now, obviously, you're going to get people wherever you're working, uh, they're going to be drunk or whatever, but you can rationalize with them. And that's using the licensing app to say, well, okay, according to the licensing app, it's not me that's saying it, it's a licensing app, 2003. Uh, just bear that in mind, all right? <coughs> licensing is issued by the local authority. That sometimes comes up, so you know which it's issued by. Licensing at 2003. Uh, types of license. We have the retail and sale of alcohol. I know that you've already done a shop at the shops. I know that you're working on licensing premises already. We have a supply of alcohol to club premises, regulated entertainment, late night refreshment. These are all licensing active, uh, licensable activities. Licensing conditions, uh, you have the premises license holder, but that's the person, that's the person or the company. And then we have a personal license to sell or authorise the sale of alcohol. That's what you've got <laughs> at the moment. Have you got the personal license holder to be able to do it? No. So if you wanted to move up within or become a bar manager, or be, become a DPS, you'd be looking to go down that route, so the personal license holder. It's, how long did you do yours over, your course over? <coughs> it's one day, one day, yeah, one day well. so if you need it next time, just okay. let me know, man, I can sort that out. All right, personal license holders, uh, uh, it, it authorizes a person to sell or authorise the sale of alcohol, meaning if you're not there, you're at the bar, you're listed to serve. Uh, DPS, day-to-day -day control. Can you read, because a paragraph on DPS there, can you read it out please? Every venue, one DPS. Yes, yeah. At every licensed premises, that one person who has day-to-day -day control of the premises and is seen as ultimately responsible for the premises is called designated premises supervisor. If alcohol is sold to the public, the venue must have DPS and the DPS must have a personal license. Door supervisors must know the identity of the DPS as well as any other managers in the venue where they work. To avoid the door supervisor should take instruction from only one manager each evening. Okay, now when the police come round, they don't say, Can you see the manager? They look at you and I say, and I said this before when you were on last program, they say DPS. So designated premises supervisors a title. Are you familiar with that term? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, just to make sure you're familiar with that terminology there. One person in control does not have to be there all the time, but he must make sure it's coordinated correctly. If somebody else is serving, uh, licensing officers turned up and they were looking at closure with them because they didn't have a DPS. It was, it was a personal license. So they had the DPS that wasn't there but they didn't have a personal license holder on site. So, it, it, and they never had nothing listed as the retail sale of alcohol, so we're looking to close them. <coughs> okay, licensing objectives here, very important, four licensing objectives. I'm sure, I'm sure these are, um, I'm sure you remember some of these. Prevent crime and disorder, we were going through them before. Prevent public nuisance, pr child, pr child protection, protection from children from harm. Uh, so whenever you apply for a license, or whoever you, whoever's in charge <coughs> of the venue should have that in place. They should have a policy in place demonstrating how you're going to meet licensing objectives. There should be something there in place. Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. Who is ultimately responsible for the of employees, it's going to be you directly. Yeah. Well, who's, who's the employer? It's going to be you, and you're going to be directly. There is another program on this at Dorling Dick. All right, it's about four hours. It's, 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 
you know, to it, all right? So it says that it is a duty of care of the employer, all right, that they must, as it says, uh, it's a duty of care, employer, self-employed staff, and it's unemployed staff. So, for example, be completed. Ultimately, it's the employer. You, the one that will be giving the instructions to whoever's working for him. And then, uh, and if you're working, you would expect to have, there'll be a strongest percentage to have the, uh, the, the instructions on how to work safely. So wherever you go, now I know for a fact when they, when they sent me over to Oceana and I had my fab list on, they asked me to work. And I said, no, listen, I can't work because they asked me to remove it while I was working. I couldn't do that. I said, I'm not going to do this. I said, we want you to remove your fab list. I said, no. It was green. <laughs> it was green. It was a big, thick green Kevlar. I've still got it. Uh, I don't use it though, but I've got it. I use it for Australia every couple of years. I can't say where it's from. Uh, but I couldn't. Um, I would. I refused to remove it and because it's my PPE. You need to get covert ones, obviously, but they weren't happy with it being obvious. So I think what they were trying to say, what they were, what they were saying, was the image you're giving across of our venue is that the stuff that goes on here. But I was thinking of my own safety as well. Alright. Uh, risk assessments. Do we know what a risk assessment is? Do you know what a risk assessment is? Yeah. 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 Okay. Have you got you must obviously you've got the visual yeah. 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 Risk assessment. Alright now, risk assessments must be done by competent people. Competent people is knowledge, skills and training. So if you're going to risk assess a venue, don't you do it? It's your brother to go in or someone to go in with. Competency, write this down, competency. Competency. Uh, competency is knowledge, skills, and training. People get mistaken and sometimes think competency is qualification. It's not. All right. So whoever whoever does the risk assessment should have ample experience of working in that industry. I got there. Uh, I would say right here is venue induction. That's what you say. Look for the world. people that are coming on board. You you need a venue induction. If you don't have a venue induction. Then obviously, uh, I would love you to do that. That's me. All right. So make sure that wherever you go, and that venue induction should be, they should tell you and identify to you all the risks and hazards in that workplace. All right. Okay. So we're clear with that. Yes. Risk assessments. Uh, like there is, a, like I said, there is a deeper. It's a, there's a lot more to this. I teach it on six five six hours. So if if you want it, let me know. And remember, uh, quotation there, the Health and Safety Network at 1974, 1974, underline that.